all I can say is that usually um, my experience of this is the sound is always spot on. It's the picture we have trouble with with the upload. So um, obviously for the first half an hour or so, it's going to be a bit more visual. And once we get deeply into the sound, you guys won't be watching the screen anyway. So bear with me and hopefully it will be good. So thank you, Fiona. Um, yeah, I'm really frustrated. I thought I had this figured out, but obviously not. And I don't want to waste any more of our time um, working it out now. So I am just going to crack on um, and apologise for the jumpy picture. I'm so sorry. I wish I could do something about it. Um, I think it is literally just the internet because it is totally fine on my monitor, I'm afraid. Okay, so without further ado, um, I will turn off my backing music so I don't incur copyright issues with our friends at YouTube. That's Cold Water Music by AIM, by the way. I love them. Okay, awesome. So, okay, guys, hi, welcome. My name's Jane. If I haven't met you before, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, this is my Friday night soundscape, which we do pretty much every other week. These are tuned into the new and full moon, so they do shift um, by a day, kind of every so often. Um, and this one is super special. There is such a lot going on in the sky right now. So um, I, I kind of build this as a solstice super session. Normally these are 90 minutes and I tend to run over by a few, especially if like tonight we've been mucking around with the technical stuff a little bit. Hi Beth. Um, but it's uh, this week is so full on. I feel like we might need a few extra minutes anyway. So um, we'll just see what we get to. Um, so, a bit of housekeeping. If you're not already listening through headphones, then please grab some if you can. It's not the end of the world if you don't have any. Um, it does, however, really make a difference if you can listen through, preferably over ear, and even better noise cancelling headphones. Um, that is simply because I stream to you in stereo, and as we've established, the sound is really consistent, even if the picture might be a little jumpy. Um, and that means that you're going to have sound coming in the right and the left ear. So if you're listening to this through a laptop speaker, it may not be as clear as we'd like it to be. Um, other housekeeping, um, sound, if you have never experienced before, and please tell me in the chat if this is your first time. Um, I know for a lot of you it's your first time with me, so thanks for coming along. Um, but if you've never experienced sound before, either in real world or on the internet, um, it's magical. You're going to have a great time. Um, one of the things that is really good to know is that your body will drop in temperature and you will most likely feel pretty dehydrated by the end of the gong bath. So make, get yourself ready, make sure you have tea, you have water, you have whatever you're going to have to lubricate yourself. Um, I wholeheartedly recommend a glass of wine much later, but not straight afterwards. So, um, so please make sure you have something, um, probably water is the best thing, um, ready to go. Um, and it is quite warm tonight. I'm a bit skewed because I'm in front of hot lights, but I know it's quite quite muggy out there. Um, timing, so where are we at? We're about 10 past seven, so I'm a couple of minutes late. Linda, first timer, wonderful, welcome. Um, about 10 past seven, so we will be spending about the first half hour or so in a workshop talking um, about what's going on with the moon, what's going on with the planet, why this affects our meditation, um, how it can help us think about what we want to explore personally right now. Um, I touch on all sorts of things. We touch on crystals, we touch on astrology, uh, we touch on Reiki, shamanism, paganism, um, ancient traditions. So some of it may really resonate with you. Some of it you'll be like, hell no. Um, one of the reasons I work this way is that I've been on pretty much a 20 year journey myself in, in kind of well-being and spirituality. And some things really repelled me early on and some things I really connected with early on. And generally that's all shifted over the years. Um, and I think it's really great to offer lots of different portals so that hopefully one of the various ways through on offer will appeal to you and you'll find your way into an incredible sound meditation this evening. Um, so we'll spend about half an hour on that. We will break that up with a couple of moments and we'll do a few minutes with the singing bowls or Tibetan bowls, um, carry on with some workshop and then into the crystal bowls. Um, and then after that, we'll be in the gong bath for about 45 to 50 minutes. Um, please stay with it. Um, sometimes people find that they have a lot of intensity at certain points. Um, if you're carrying any injuries, if I could, at the moment I'll probably be feeling my knee in hi-fi, which is why I've put myself up on a stool so that I'm not crippled on the floor like I was last time. Um, if you are carrying an injury, physical or emotional or otherwise, you will probably find the sound is drawn to the place that's giving you the discomfort. So don't be afraid if that's the case. That is the sound doing its work. Um, the sound is getting into your body. It's attaching itself to the low vibrations and lifting them up to meet the high vibrations, which is what these guys are making. 
Um, and that is the, the law of entrainment. And what that means is your body is getting into a state of self-healing, um, allowing you to find a lot more inner resonance and natural rhythm. And that's really what we're trying to do with sound therapy, vibrational therapy, is bring our bodies into, into natural rhythm, into their natural state. So um, if you have any questions about any of that, please just fire away. Um, I've equipped myself with a big enough monitor that I can see without my spectacles, so I can actually read your questions and give you an answer right away if you have any. So please feel free to jump in. Um, I do cover lots about the science of sound, by the way, um, how sound works, all the different ways we use it with bowls, with forks, with gongs, um, on my social media and a lot on my website where the blog is growing. So please do hop on over there and explore if you're interested in the science of all the cool stuff. Um, so uh, we will finish the sound probably about 10 to 8, 10 to, well, quarter to 9 or so. Um, usually when I, well, when I finish the sound, there will be uh, five minutes or so of silence, which is not for you just to switch off and turn off. I mean, feel free to at any time. It's your time, do what you like with it. Um, but there is a, always five minutes at the end of sound just to allow the sound to fully integrate and you'll notice silence feels really different. That's one of the reasons my brand is called Silence and Noise. Um, silence is a sound itself and you'll appreciate that in a whole other way at the end of your sound therapy this evening. So, um, so please stay tuned at the end of that few minutes. You may already be moving around before I give you the cues to do so. Um, you may already be having your water and kind of settling down in your space at home. Um, but just hang out for a few minutes. We will close the group together at the end and there'll be time for questions um, for anyone that has any. So let's get started. Um, so the solstice this weekend. So there's such a lot going on. I'm going to start with the solstice because for me that's the, you know, it's an annual event. It's it's once, well, twice in the year, but summer solstice is once. And this is for me over this whole weekend, the thing that kind of underpins all the other activity we have going on. Um, and the solstice, as I'm sure everyone knows, sol means sun in Latin. And the word solstice comes from the Latin, to the sun standing still, solstitium. And um, people tend to think that solstice is just the longest day. And the longest day is actually Sunday, but the solstice here in the UK is Saturday night. It's going to be at 9.43 in the evening. So um, if you are up and around and looking at horizon at 9.43, that's a good time to just mark on your watch and be aware that that's the moment the sun is standing still at its furthest point from the celestial equator. So it's where the poles of the earth get as far as possible from the celestial equator. Um, and what this means is for us in the northern hemisphere, we're having our biggest expanse of light um, the sun is having its biggest impression on the earth. We have the most minutes of light, the most heat from the sun, the most intensity from the rays of the sun. Um, and that's pretty incredible. I mean, the sun is a huge star. It affects every microcosm in our solar system. So for it to be having its big kind of glorious moment, I mean, we talk about moments in the sun as the sun having its own moment, um, I think is really special and it's something to really celebrate. So. So that will be happening um, tomorrow evening. I'm doing a little outdoor session here in Newquay tomorrow evening and hopefully next year we'll be able to do a lovely big one again instead of for five people. Um, but wherever you are, do take time at about quarter to ten just to pause and look at the sky and just note how you feel. Notice any energy that's coming in, particularly after your sound this evening, you might notice something specific coming in. You might have some messages or images or intuitions that have found you during your sound meditation. Um, and they often will surface at the, the kind of the peak and the pinnacle of the events that we've been working with in these sessions. So be mindful and be ready for that. So I'm going to jump down to the floor, my first foray off my little stool. Um, I'm almost certainly going to tangle my lovely capy thing on that at some point. So look out for that and enjoy it whenever it happens. I'm sure it won't take long. So we're going to begin this evening with a little meditation with the Tibetan bowls, which I used to play all the time and actually lately I haven't been using as much so I felt like they were really important to connect with um, for this particular season. Um, I've noticed I put the camera a little bit low but I'm going to just hold them up so you can see. I'm sure lots of you are familiar with these lovely bowls. You see them in yoga studios all over the land these days. Um, mostly made of bronze. And and they really are a special magical sound. So we're going to just open our session this evening by bringing everybody into the space, getting you out of whatever headspace, whatever anxiety you brought with you to the session this evening. 
and working together just to diffuse that to allow you into your meditative state so it's worth mentioning early on that sound can be used for meditation it can be used for therapy it can be used for relaxation I like to use it for all of these things and you can choose exactly what you want to receive from the evening and we'll begin just by closing the eyes so wherever you are I don't feel you have to necessarily lie down at this stage if you're not ready to we're going to come back and forth out of the sound for half an hour so um, if you stay seated for now or just kind of chilled out do close your eyes and start applying a visual to your energy body see if at first glance any particular area of your body is calling you if you have any discomfort any pain any fear or anxiety i know that my knees a bit painful i've got kind of a slightly stiff left shoulder banged my head on the car door earlier so I've got a lump here just just scan your body get familiar with what's going on really tune in to your physical layer and as you tune into your physical layer see if you can get a little bit deeper see if you can scan the area around your body the energy field so some people call this aura I don't really like the word aura that much it feels a bit too esoteric I like energy body find that works for you call it whatever you like and see what's going on in there do you feel a bit kind of twitchy and anxious do you feel quite serene and calm and this body scanning is one of the first steps to a positive meditative experience getting used to our own realm our own landscape So if you're familiar with your chakras and you can quickly locate your solar plexus, then send your awareness to that area. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, then see if you can locate the midpoint of your body. And this is usually a couple of inches above your navel and then into the back of the body. So kind of find your navel, draw upwards, and then imagine you're touching the very the inner side of the spine. And the solar plexus is your third chakra, Manipura in Sanskrit. This area of the body is your sun. The chakra is your own personal sun. It's usually seen as gold or yellow or kind of a mustardy colour. And this is the seat of your power, your own sun power, your yang side, your masculine energy, heat, fire power. This is the chakra associated with the element of fire. And it's also you get your motivation and your kind of direction if you're going to have anger it's where that comes from too you have a lot of those strong emotions originate in your solar plexus so see if you can visualize this solar plexus as a golden sun right in the center of your body really glowing really look into the light and really see the glow Continue to observe that inner sun. See that glow expand. It expands at the bottom until it's covering your pelvis, the hip area. It expands at the top until it's covering the heart area. Now observe the increased heat and power of this sun. allow that sun to expand even further until the base it's covering the knees and at the top it's covering the shoulders and keep that golden glowing sun expanding until your whole body is enveloped silvery gold shimmering illuminating light heat and warmth you're not uncomfortable just at whatever temperature you like
gently. Imagine that golden sun emanating from the center of your being, your solar plexus. Imagine that light softening as a veil is just resting over your body and then the light is seeping through your skin, absorbing all that sun power. Come back to your space. Guys, I'm just double checking this is still running okay. If you're on the chat, can you just say hi and let me know you're there, Fiona or Amber or Kelly, Kerry? Anyone that already said hi, just let me know. There we go. Hi, Fiona, thank you. Sorry, it looked like it stopped for a second there. I couldn't tell. Um, awesome. So let's come back from our little sun meditation. Thank you, Kirsty. How's everyone feeling? You feeling warm and glowy? Cool. It's so disorienting and I'm trying to always get people to interact in the chat, but I know everyone's just kind of, hey Juan, nice to meet you. Um, everyone's just kind of in their space, chilling out. So sometimes I freak out a bit if I haven't seen anyone say anything for a while. I'm like, oh my God, what's going on? Um, okay, so back from our little connection to our solar plexus. How do you feel? Are you really aware of your solar plexus? Is that part of your body that you connect with, that you you understand, that you resonate with. Just have a little moment to observe how you feel. And if you're taken to journaling, I always invite lots of journaling during sessions. It's really good to just write something down. Even if you have no idea what it's going to be, just pick up your pen and paper, notes on your phone if you haven't got one to hand, and just write something down, just see what comes. How do you feel? How's your body? How's your mind? How's your energy? It's always good to just get in the habit of asking yourself these questions. So let's um, move these little bowls out the way while you guys are taking a little note and a little swig of water. And the next thing we're going to move into is talking about the astrology of this season, which is my favourite part. So how many... Cancerians do we have listening? I know we have a couple, a couple of you I know personally, but let me know if you have cancer in your sun or in your moon as well, actually. Cancer moon is very interesting right now. Good to know. And, um, or if you have cancer rising, um, if you know much about astrology, you'll know that actually your sun sign is the face that you show the world. Your rising sign is the elements that you really are my little stool. So I'm going to turn my page of my notes. So I have loads of stuff to talk about here and I don't want to forget anything. Cancer Sun, Kirsty, I think you told me that, didn't you? And I obviously Anna is. And I know Julia is, if she's here as well. Um, and so maybe you Cancerians will resonate with this because we're coming into Cancer season. It's the new moon in Cancer on Sunday. That's partially what we're looking at in this session. And we will come to the sign, the zodiac aspects of cancer. Cancer moon, Kelly, awesome. Um, so cancer, as I'm sure lots of you know, is a water sign. Um, I always struggle with saying the word cancer. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have that, and I apologize for the Cancerians, the crabs we have. Um, one of my teachers, my astrology teacher, um, Yasmin, always, that she hates to use the word cancer. She uses moon child, because cancer is the sign of the moon child. Um, cancer is ruled by the moon, all zodiac signs are ruled by a planet or a moon. Um, and I think moon child is kind of a nicer way to work. I did use cancer in all of my boxes this season. Um, but yeah, I think particularly if you're someone like me that's been through a tumour, it's kind of, the word can sometimes give you a little bit of a jar. So um, I think I might just start saying moon child for the rest of this session, if that's okay with you guys. Um, so we are in the season of the moon child, which is a water season, water sign. And that's straight away our first big kind of conflict of the season because we have watery moon child, Cancer, and then this fiery sun, solstice season, all kind of colliding together in the weekend. We've also got five Platinum planets in retrograde and top it all off, there's a solar eclipse on Sunday. So tons of stuff going on in the cosmos. Um, the five retrogrades are, are kind of mixed up with these three eclipses. So what we've got this weekend is a solar eclipse. We had a lunar eclipse back on June the 5th, 
on the Sag full moon and we've got another full moon eclipse on the Capricorn full moon on July the 4th. So our little solar eclipse here is in the middle. And um, we've also, we find that when we walk through eclipse seasons, they, they're really, yeah, moon child is so much better, Kirsty, isn't it? Um, these eclipse seasons, I call them eclipse gateways. You start, you know, you start at the beginning, we start in June, and it's kind of a slog over the course of a month to understand what these eclipses are telling us. What eclipses do is magnify the power of the moon by about 10 times. So um, all the energy that we're coming through and moving through in this season is just superpowered. Um, but this is a solar eclipse, which is a little different. Um, and actually, for anyone that's interested in eclipses, it is the really cool one. It's the, called an annular eclipse, which is where you get the ring of fire. Um, tragically, we're not going to be able to see it in the UK. If you happen to be, uh, I think most of Africa will have it, certainly south um, in the Middle East, Middle East and South Asia, and I think northern bits of Australia, um, Indonesia, all those areas. So um, you, we can't see it here. But there's a really awesome website that I'm going to link you guys into afterwards where you can watch um, the eclipses in real time if, like me, you're a complete geek for this stuff. Um, but one of the things I love about eclipses, and again, my um, Yasmin taught me about this, is that when you have these annular eclipses, the ring of fire is kind of like the fuel, you know, the fuel of the fire, the flame, the heat. And then what we're seeing in front of the sun is the shadow of the moon, creating this big, dark disk across the front of the sun. And, um, and you can see that as kind of the void, or the kind of the womb, the birthing center. So we have this kind of dark space, and around it, the, the light kind of trying to feed it in to create something new. And solar eclipses are very powerful for new beginnings. The fact that this is happening over a new moon makes it even more powerful for new beginnings. So um, this is definitely something we want to be focusing our energies on this week. And I invite you all to think about your new beginnings and what you're starting, what's new in your life, particularly with what's been going on in the world the last few months. We've all got a lot of change and lots of stuff that feels different, that wasn't in the plan, and that we're now having to absorb and navigate. So, so um, take some time to bring those aspects into your journal. Um, one thing I would say about the uh, about the eclipse is it's also at naught degrees cancer, which is um, naught is the or zero is the infinity number, so that makes it even more superpowered. Um, and of course, we've also got a Mercury retrograde going through cancer, which started yesterday. So I'm going to blame Mercury retrograde on why my picture suddenly frozen with me doing this. Hope they're moving again by the time you um, you get to this part of the sound. Um, but Mercury is the planet of communication. Um, I'm sure lots of you know that Mercury rules Gemini. We've just been moving through Gemini season, which I have found especially tough. I'm so not into Gemini. Um, and respectfully to most Gemini people, maybe it's uh, a certain Gemini is in my life. I've got quite a lot of them and I, I find the energy quite challenging a lot of the time. It's a real um, up and down, kind of airy, chatty, floaty, quite hard to pin down kind of vibe. Um, and Mercury is the ruler of this energy. Very fluid, changeable, all is not what it seems, lots of smoke and mirrors, illusions of people speaking the truth, are they throwing you a smoke screen? And Mercury retrogrades tend to freak people out because they think that's what it's all about. But retrogrades are not real. Planets don't go backwards, that does not happen. Um, all that happens in a retrograde is our vision of a planet from Earth um, is skewed because of the nature of the sort of not always purely circular natures of orbits up in the solar system. So what we're doing is we're looking up at the same orbit we've always seen that we normally see going in one direction. But because of the physics of the angle we're at and the angle Mercury's at, suddenly it looks like it's going backwards. But it's not. And that's the important thing to remember. It's an apparition, an illusion. Um, it's just giving us a different lens, a different perspective with which to see the current state of our life. And in this case, the current state of our communications, our self-expression, the way we're speaking to our the truth to the world. So um, again, more exciting things to bring into your journaling and your meditation this evening around that Mercury retrograde, around that communication aspect. Um, are you speaking your truth? Um, I read something the other day actually from an astrologer I really like to read a lot and you can read about her on for, uh, foreverconscious.com um, and she was talking about the idea of Mercury being a vibration, um, our communication not just being our thoughts and our words but a vibration that we give off. And this really resonated with me as a sound therapist and a vibrational healer. Um, you know, everything is sound. I say a lot, the world is sound. Uh, I think it's my Instagram handle at the moment. And it's, um, and it is everything, you know, this, my beloved stool, my bowls, the gongs, you guys, the camera, the screens, all of it is just sound. It's frequency at different densities, at different speeds. And I really love this idea that, you know, we can, we can communicate with our thoughts, with our words, and we can also communicate through our vibration. And hopefully something that you guys that have had sound before will be familiar with is the idea that 
you know, this vibe, you know, you really feel a vibration in your body and in your energy body. You can give off a vibration. So I've been thinking a lot today about what vibration I'm giving off. You know, even if I'm having positive thoughts, am I vibrating positivity or am I kind of holding it back or mixing it up in some way? And for me, that's what this Mercury retrograde is really all about. You know, the the idea that we, um, we've got a lot of smoke and mirrors about and actually are we really walking the walk and sharing our truth in the way we intend to are we thinking something with great integrity and then it's just coming out a bit wrong so um i invite you all to explore your vibration this evening as well when we really get into the sounds really looking for vibration in your bones and your tissues and your energy field in this biosonic field and just seeing what you can feel you know, how does it feel to you does it feel good does it feel serene does it feel a bit jacket around the edges and just observe that have a look at that it's quite exciting um, right, what was I going to talk to you guys about next? I have so many things to talk to you about. Um, vibrations, solar eclipses, the retrogrades. Just a quick note on all the retrogrades, actually. I'm kind of aware of the time, which I keep losing off my screen. Um, the retrogrades we have right now is literally everything. <laughs> we have Mercury, Pluto, Saturn, Jupiter, Venus. Um, Neptune is going retrograde, I think it's on the 25th, and then there'll be practically everything. Um, and what retrograde really is, is, is a glance backwards. It's an opportunity to look at the past, perhaps to past lives, if that's a thing you work with. And sound is a great place to explore that work. Um, and just see what learnings are unresolved, what stuff needs to come forward and be washed out over this really busy eclipse weekend. Um, I mentioned already it's a weekend of new beginnings. So it's a great time to just take a little glance behind you, check for anything that's just kind of got thrown out the car on the way that you need to pick up clean off and get rid of fully or just put away. Um, I know the stuff that I'm dragging around constantly that I think I've dealt with, but actually it just needs a bit more awareness, a bit of intention. And that might be in your meditation, it might be journaling, it might be a phone call you need to make, a relationship that needs a pause or a, a new approach or a fresh set of communicated tools. Um, but just take a little scan through your past, your recent past, look a bit further. Um, and it's a really nice thing if you're not sure what to bring into your sound meditation this evening to maybe consider what's going on in your past that you might want to explore. So, um, I've got a, little, a couple of little mantras on that note actually that I wanted to share with you. Um, it's really nice, I think, to, to use a new moon to just practice a little bit of acceptance of where we are. It can be really easy to get stuck in this kind of, well not stuck, but pulled into this kind of new beginnings, quick, clean slate, let's go, new stuff all the time and, and be a little bit, not really gentle enough with ourselves. So. Um, I was working on mantras this morning and I, um, I wrote down, I accept this chapter of my life with a whole and grateful heart. I accept this chapter of my life with a whole and grateful heart. And another one, which we'll come back to shortly, is I honour the power of the sun and offer gratitude for the light and power it bestows upon me. I honour the power of the sun and offer gratitude for the light and power it bestows upon me. So let me know in the chat if you want me to repeat any of that or I can type it in there for you afterwards. Uh, let me look at a few things I wanted to mention to you before we get too much into the sound. So looking at Cancer, the moon child, this is a, it's quite an interesting dance, I always think, at this time of year, because we have the solstice, um, this kind of super-powered, fiery season, and then we have moon child, water, sensitive, delicate, quite different. And these are coming together in this big kind of meeting of energies, meeting of elements, meeting of astrological signs and cosmology over this weekend, creating quite an interesting kind of mix for both of us. So... Um, uh, Alejandra, I'll um, read those back for you. Um, okay, the first one was, I accept this chapter of my life with a whole and grateful heart. I accept this chapter of my life with a whole and grateful heart. And the second one, I honour the power of the sun and offer gratitude for the light and power it bestows upon me. I honour the power of the sun and offer gratitude for the light and power it bestows upon me. And that last one is a bit of a revision of the Gayatri Mantra, which we'll come to later. 
But just jumping back to solstice and moon child for a moment. You can type those into the chat at the end if you guys need. Um, so solstice, we mentioned earlier, this is the zenith of the journey of the sun. It reaches its highest point. Um, it's at its most powerful. And there's some interesting reading, and actually Shakespeare, I don't know where I was at it, um, Shakespeare covered this in some of his um, words in A Midsummer Night's Dream, that we, we celebrate the solstice as being this time of great power, but actually just bef as the sun reaches its peak, it's then about to start weakening again. So there is a, a kind of, again, a natural balance in there that I think we can really apply to our own journey. Um, that something is at its strongest and biggest just before it goes on the side. And, you know, we've seen that in um, God knows how many actors and actresses, footballers past their prime. Um, you know, people reach their peak, but a peak can't last forever. The sun's power can't last forever. And I think one of the beautiful things about the solstice is it is just a moment in time. It's a fixed point. And then just as quickly as it comes, it's over again and we're on the other side of it. And suddenly the light is waning, the power is waning. And it's why it's so important to really mark that pinnacle of power. So um, a few things about the solstice. Um, it's a really ancient celebration, obviously. It's been marked by cultures all over the world um, since the dawn of time. Um, one of the stories I really like about solstice was it's as far back as, uh, I think, the 4th century BC, but it's really well known in pagan and Nordic tradition, is this idea of a solar wheel, where um, on the eve of the solstice, the communities, the villages, would create a wheel. Often they'd pull like a wheel off a mill um, and set fire to it and then roll it down, down towards water, the idea that fire meets water. And I really like this relative to the solstice and moon child story. Um, and it's also really important to think, you know, the, the, the sun is so strong and powerful, but actually water can put fire out really quickly. It, nature gives us a, an opposition, an opposing force in everything. Um, and when the sun is so big and powerful and we have so much light, I think we're invited, oh, Jackie, hello, um, we are um, invited to reflect on the contrast between the winter solstice and the summer. Um, I'm, despite being wintry in all my, my chart, my astrology, I'm such a light summer person. And I, although I do like winter solstice and so in that darker season, um, just thinking back to those days where we only get six hours of daylight just seems so, they kind of make me want to put a coat on just thinking about it, even though it's so warm in here. So, um, so it's good to think about oppositions, yin and yang, light and dark, black and white, the kind of extreme polarities of your own experience, your own personality, maybe the polarities in your chart and your sign. You guys are telling me about where moon child is in your chart. You know, what's the opposing house? How does that feel? What's the contrast? If you're not sure, there's loads of cool sites you can find your chart on and I can give you those at the end if you need. Um, but I guess the upshot of all this chatter, which I will wind up now, we're getting to the end of the, the chatter part, um, is that we've got this balance between elements. So today we're going to work a bit with fire and we're going to work a bit with the, the water elements of the, the Cancerian sun, Cancerian moon that we're working with. Um, so Cancer Moonchild is sensitive, watery, emotional, um, very known for having kind of sensitivities in the physical body, in the digestive area, particularly in the digestive tract. Um, and moon child is ruled by the moon, as we've said, and we all know the moon is what rules the tides on earth and rules our liquid aspects of our body. So um, again, have a little look into your body, scan now and see, you know, is it, is it liquid or is it fire? What do you feel first? What element do you connect with? You know, how are you as a person? Are you drawn to hot things? Do you like chilly? Do you like being warm? Are you like me, a sun lizard out there on the sun lounger as soon as it gets above 15 degrees? Or are you a cool, watery person that wants to be in the ocean at any opportunity? Generally, most of us will find we're one or the other. We're more tuned into certain elements, and that can really resonate with our chart. So it's also stuff to explore in your sound meditation this evening. So I need to get my little stool again. It's not really easy to do this very dignified, so <laughs> sorry if that's all looking a bit kooky. I'm going to move her slightly out of the way. A little bit noisy. Okay. So we'll get him out of the way. Um, we are going to have a quick look at some ritual stuff and those of you who practice with me a fair bit will be aware that this is usually a really big part of my face-to-face -face work. It's much harder to do online. Um, I've moved stuff around as much as I can. It's really hard to get things close enough so what I always do is take pictures and I will send these to you guys afterwards. So those of you who are interested in seeing my kind of little grids and stuff close up um, can take a look in more detail uh, when we're not in a live session and I'm not kind of shuffling tables around. Um, so I'll just talk you through what we've got going on here. Um, the first thing I always work with is the tarot. And um, I'm working with the Wild Unknown Tarot. Where's my whole deck gone? I've lost my 
entire card deck look under here uh, the Wild Unknown, which if you haven't seen, is a really beautiful tarot. There's so many great decks out there now, but I am um, quite faithful to this. I've had this since it came out eight years ago. Um, and the Chariot is the card, which is the one that resonates with the Moon Child. And in Danielle's tarot, The Wild Unknown, um, I'll show you a little closer. The Chariot is this beautiful horse, like a real steed or stallion, and he has the moon on his head and is holding a five-pointed star at his throat and just looks really serene and magical and what I also like about this card is although he's got the moon on his head he's got the sun above him and the rays of the sun are all around his head and this really shows the kind of unexpected duality of the moon child season we have this fire and water collision over this weekend and I think lots of our Cancerian friends you guys can let me know Kirsty and Anna and anyone else um, have this kind of mixture of real sort of sensitivity and introversion and you know t tendency to go inwards and yet the kind of propensity for great tenacity and power and fire when you want it um, but you're very good at turning it on and off and that energy is what we can all tap into over this season so the chariots um, really reflective of being able to make the right decision at the right time which is a, a trait I think we'd all like to have more of certainly the government would try not to be too over political um, in terms of what's going on with our um, ritual, we will come to this a little bit more in a moment because um, <laughs> just got Anna. Um, I will come back to the crystals and to the oils and everything else in a moment. Um, but what I'd like us to do first is take a little moment to set some intentions as we start to move towards the sound. So um, having listened to all my chatter about solstices and moons and retrogrades and eclipses, um, if anything is spoken to you in particular, if you want to ask any questions or any details, please feel free to do so. Um, and just take a moment to write down your intention. See if you can get your intention down in one line, one sentence. You can maybe do two. You can have an intention for the this season, this lunar season that begins this weekend for this new moon in Cancer. You can have an intention for this sun year that starts with the solstice on Saturday night. Good to know, Kirsty. And, um, and you can also set an intention very specifically for your meditation this evening here with me. So again, I know we have a couple of, of people who've never had sound before. Um, sound can be extremely relaxing. For everybody, it's usually really relaxing. It gives you um, a 45-minute gong breath will give you the equivalent of four hours sleep. Um, so whatever else happens, your body will be rested, your mind will be rested. Um, it slows your brainwaves down, which hopefully shuts off some of the chatter, the voices that we all would love to get rid of. Um, gives your mind, your energy, some space to breathe. It can be really therapeutic if you are carrying injuries. The sound will seek to get into those spaces where there's blockages and help to release the blockages to allow the cells to start re-healing re themselves and the body to repair itself at a cellular level, which sounds very esoteric and unlikely, but believe me, it does work. And this is one of the reasons I share this work. Um, with such passion as I've been there with physical stuff um, and stuff that normally you get chemotherapy and radiotherapy for and for me sound has been um, incredibly supportive so it's a powerful tool and even through the internet it's still really powerful so decide how you would like to channel that power and set your intention and I'm going to spend a few moments beginning to chime in with these bowls to begin to get your brain firing on both sides so your yin and yang your left and right the binaural aspect of these bowls will come in and start to bring you into a slightly meditative state early on for some people these drop you down really quick be aware so as i'm doing that feel free to get going on your intention if you have not already and if you have got any questions always feel free just to pop them in into that chat i can i only have about a 10 second delay so i can jump back and recover something if you need
got your intention ready to go, if you have a piece of paper, you can take it out of the pad or whatever you've written on and scrunch it up. One of the things that's really powerful to do over a new and a full moon, but especially a new moon, um, is burning of things, burning of intentions. Um, and particularly while we're in a fire season and we have this amazing solstice energy, um, harnessing that fire, um, releasing through the power of fire that has the power to burn away and cleanse and transform is something we really want to do. So I personally, at every full and new moon, write my intentions. I write a list of gratitude, a list of forgiveness. Um, I sit with them during my meditation and then at the end of it, I go outside, take my little singing bowl here, burn them all and then put the ashes back into the ground. And actually... That's really resonant of a tradition um, that was really big in pagan times. Um, and actually the witches, the Wiccan community, love to do this as well, is to, to kind of create to, to create ashes from intentions and then to either um, put them in a little pouch and carry them as a protective amulet, um, protecting you against your kind of own inner worst fears and lots of ways, or to even use water to mush them into a clay and then make kind of little um, kind of clay beads or something they can wear. So... I kind of really love that idea and I have a friend who makes um, beautiful ceramics for me that go in the uh, ritual boxes that I send out that I know some of you guys have and um, I do keep thinking about getting him to maybe put some ashes of intentions into those bowls for us so that's something we might explore at some point. Um, a couple of other solstice things, um, these bowls are 432 hertz, a um, bit of sound science for you, um, 432 is related down to divine deep means 8 hertz, which is the pulse of the planet. Um, and 432 um, is deeply connected with Stonehenge, which of course is very important for solstice. Uh, it's where I would normally be spending the weekend, so quite unusual to be watching it through, um, through the magic of the internet. But for anyone who is interested, I know Stonehenge and Glastonbury are both doing live broadcasts through the weekend. So if you're on my newsletter, you'll get some links to that tomorrow. Um, inter interestingly enough, um, sound is supposedly how Stonehenge was built. They used sound and vibration to bounce the stone. Yeah, sold them up. I love that idea. Um, and there is all sorts of incredible science about the, the frequency of 432 and the ratio of 432 being connected to the pyramids, to um, all sorts of amazing ancient sites, including Stonehenge. And most stone circles are built on a ratio of 432 with the idea that this is the, the resonance of Earth. It's a bit geeky. Um, Helen, you said hi. I don't know if you had a question or not, but I'm just acknowledging your hi. Um, and we're going to just have a quick look at the ritual table before we get into the gongs. So I'm just putting this in a little bit. You guys probably can't see this that clearly, I'm afraid. Um, but as I said, I will take pictures and I can share this with you um, tomorrow or this evening after the event so you can have a closer look at what we're working with. Um, so every ritual needs an element and this is a mixture of fire and water i haven't actually used water in the bowls today i have got some in the singing bowls and i've spritzed the room with a rose water before we began um but the fire i'm working with doesn't have to be complex just a candle um hi helen um and this is a candle actually i've put citrine into this candle to really help harness the sun power because citrine is um the sun stone as we're about to discover so I'm going to kick off my little ritual table by lighting my candle. And this will be the flame that I use to burn my intentions list, which I carefully wrote before we began. Ooh, that fire really wants to be alive. I always like to work with oils. Um, people often ask me why, and the reason why is because I think any way that we can connect more deeply to nature and the elements is really beneficial um, in our meditations, whether we're just sitting still in Vipassana or Transcendental Meditation or Vedic Meditation or whether we're doing something like this a little more 360, working with lots of different aspects of ritual practice with sort of shamanic influence and pagan influence and you know the science of sound and other stuff. So um, I really like to work with oils. I've made a special blend. I make a special blend for every moon. Um, they're always in my rituals boxes and if you want to find out about the blends you can just email me or they'll be on my newsletters every month. Um, this one is grapefruit, which is a really uplifting, obviously a lovely citrusy, fresh, zingy morning, kind of a live scent, which I love. Um, it has Roman chamomile, which is one of the most soothing, delicate scents, which is perfect for this kind of slightly sensitive, emotional moon child season. Um, we also have rosemary, which is one of my absolute favourites, super grounding, and it's something that I think is really important to, to, to use at a time where there's such a lot of loose energy around us this weekend. 
Um, you have geranium, which also is very soothing. It's very calming. It's kind of in that camp with lavender and chamomile. Um, but it's really summery. I mean, I've got loads of beautiful geraniums in my garden right now. I think lots of us are seeing them as we're now freely moving around again. So um, grapefruit, rosemary, chamomile and geranium is a really beautiful blend. Um, I like to take a little bit before sound and if you have any oils or scents or even perfume or sprays with you, I like to take it across my pulse points, around the backs of the ears and across the temples. And just as I'm beginning to settle into meditation and deeper breaths, those scents really come in and really, I think, connect elementally. And obviously they have their own properties in terms of balancing the endocrine system, the physical system, the blood. So it's really great to work with scents as well with aromas. Now I've got my flame going, I can get my cleansing going. Um, it's always important to cleanse your space as you come into a ritual environment. I generally work with herbs um, in shamanic practice, which is a really big part of my personal experience. Burning herbs is the main way we cleanse our space. White sage, which is uh, native to California, is what I use the most. Um, but there's loads of other herbs that we use, cedarwood, desert sage, and actually rosemary, which was in our oil blend, and I'm using it again. This is just rosemary from my garden. It doesn't have to be um, particularly high tech. So I've just dried this for a couple of days so that it will catch a light enough to smoke, which is all we need it to do. And once you have a little bit of smoke, I try not to go too crazy. I'm quite famous for almost setting fire to my sound space. Um, it's really great to pass the smoke around your own energy body, around the crown chakra, around the third eye, the throat, the heart, the solar plexus down to the root. Also really good to pass your feet over your smoke as well. And if you're working with instruments as I am or with crystals, you can pass those through the smoke to cleanse them. You may have seen that you can also cleanse crystals in salt, you can cleanse them in, a, in full moonlight. So I can take my little piece of rose quartz, pass it through the smoke, whilst mentally programming it with my intention for this ritual. And that stone is going to be good to go. I just think I'm burning here. So moving on to what else is here, I've got some beautiful flowers, I picked these roses from my garden this evening and this is really just to represent the summer, that real midsummer aspect, you know, I like to work a lot with flowers in the summer, during the winter it tends to be more leaves, um, in spring maybe it's soil, um, but just something that brings a little bit of nature into our, into our circle, into our space. And then onto the crystals, so I often refer to these as minerals or rocks rather than crystals, I think it's become a bit of a dirty word on Instagram lately. Um, there's a lot here today. So the main one I'm working with is, uh, is citrine, beautiful citrine. I've got a lovely big chunk of it here and this is, um, I hope the light's catching this beautifully enough, it's such a magical piece. I got this in the Himalayas and it is just one of my favourite things I own. Um, so citrine is a sunstone and it harnesses the power of the sun, it's an abundant stone. So particularly wonderful if you're looking to draw abundance into your life, I recommend citrine. Um, that's its raw state, this is a, a similar raw citrine, this is a better one actually. And you can see the lighter shades, they're really prismy, they really draw the light through. And you can also get some darker citrines, I have an example of one here to show you. Um, you can see that this is really almost yellowy at the end. And this is um, often called common citrine, and what this actually is, is heat tree amethyst. So if you're looking for real sun power, really try and find the raw natural stuff. We're working with moonstone, and this comes in various shades. Um, I've got a lighter and a more grey here, and I love this stone. It's really, you know, reminiscent of the surface of the moon. Um, it really captures moon energy. There's like kind of tide lines and you know, under kind of scars and undercurrents going through these. And it's really appropriate for this kind of lunar energy that we're in right now and for the moon child vibe as well. Um, I've also got strawberry quartz, a little bit of sparkle. I don't usually go for a process prism point, but this is just really spoke to me. And this is a another good sunstone. Um, all the kind of warmer colours, so strawberries, hot quartzes, jasper, red jasper, carnelian, um, are particularly great for working with during solstice. So I've also got one carnelian and one sunstone here as well. It's the orange ones. Um, selenite. If you only have one thing for your sound ceremony or sound journey, selenite is one of the best things you can use. It really enhances astral travel. 
Um, it helps you access your intuitive psychic levels. It helps you get through the veil, connect with your guides if you're working with them or inviting them in or would like to meet someone. Um, and selenite, obviously, your selen is moon, Latin, so this is another good moonstone. And last but not least, today I am working, or twice actually, I'm working with Labradorite, which has nothing to do with either cancer season or the moon, um, but it is a stone that is so powerful for me personally. It's a real Scorpio stone, actually. Um, it's very much about intuition, about psychic ability. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful stone for protection um, and a wonderful stone for helping you understand mixed messages and decipher the codes to declutter tricky communication. And that's the reason I've got Labradorite so present in my in my grid and in my life right now I've got a huge lump of it on the fireplace downstairs it's kind of in my line of vision all the time because I feel like in, in these really uncertain times with a lot of fake news and a lot of confusing messaging um, having a kind of a protection from that and something that helps you really see past the smoke and mirrors is super important. The last stone I'm working with tonight is emerald and this is a really raw emerald so it doesn't look as emeraldy as you think it might do. Um, emerald is a fourth chakra stone, which is the chakra associated with the moon child, with cancer. Um, it's the stone of successful love. It's a real softening, abundant stone for love. And I think particularly for this season when things can feel really heightened and there's such a lot of cosmic stuff going on, um, that emerald energy is just really supportive. So I hope you like that. So... There's the, the little ritual altar, there's the candles, the flowers, the oils, we've got our chariot tarot ready to go, we're all infusing the space, and I think we're ready to get into some gong. So wherever you are, if you'd like to get yourself comfortable, get yourself settled, if you're in a space that's quite light, which I imagine most people are, given how light it is, then do cover your eyes, it really does make a difference. If you can switch off your physical senses, Take a quick swig of water if you need to before you settle down. As I mentioned at the top, know that you will get a little dehydrated, your body temperature will drop. Just call to mind as we begin your intention. Become really aware of what it is that you would like to draw into your practice this evening and into your meditation. There's no worries at all, Tyra. We're just about to get into the sound. You can listen back to all the workshop stuff whenever you like. I have one more little mantra or affirmation to share with you as we begin to move into the sound this evening. I'm gonna move my little throne stool out of the way. <laughs> Let's try to get me out of the shop. This final mantra says, may the radiance of the sun illuminate our minds and guide us on the path to awakening. May the radiance of the sun illuminate our minds and guide us on the path to awakening. As you settle into your body, feel the earth support you, feel your limbs heavy, your breath deep. Tension shift down to the tip of your body, tips of the toes, tips of your toes. Imagine your feet opening down into the earth, creating a portal to release, a portal for anything you don't need. And then take your attention in one go back up to the crown of the head and reconnect with that gold and shimmering silvery light illuminating solar plexus light we met at the beginning of the session. Draw the light through your crown, through your third eye, through the head, the shoulders, the heart. Wash your body with golden light and let it pick up anything you don't need. Let it sweep through your body, through your legs and throw all that stuff you don't need out through your feet, down into the earth. Take your attention back up to the crown again, washing your body with golden light shimmer through your bones, your nerves, your veins, your blood, washing through, lifting anything you don't need and sending it out through the soles of your feet down into the earth, ashes to ashes, back to the crown of the head, golden light washing through you, washing through the third eye, through the heart, through the solar plexus, through the sacral and the root chakras, down the legs, 
into the sounds, allow yourself to be heavy, your breath to be deep, your intention to be true. Be open to whatever comes to you, whatever images, whatever words, whatever feelings, whatever voices. Have no fear because you're here in a safe space with me and the sounds and each other. If you have any discomfort, you can always open your eyes and reconnect with your physical realm, but I encourage you to stay with the sound if you can. It's taking you 
you connect with your breath, feeling the breath traveling deeper into the body so the abdomen fills and lifts, you feel your solar plexus expand. And with deep sighs, the air gradually expels through the lips in a soft sigh. Breathing in. moment to observe your body, observe your mind as you begin to come back to the conscious state, feeling your fingertips, wiggling your toes, maybe grounding your feet, stretching out the space, the skin between the fingers, feeling the blood and the energy pump back into every area of your physical vessel. In Wiccan tradition, well, much of shamanic practice and ancient Celtic lore, folklore, there are two kings of nature, the Oat King rules from the winter solstice to the summer and through midsummer they're engaged in a battle of wills of yin and yang light and dark white and black summer and winter and then by the end of midsummer as the sun tilts off her fixed point and begins her gentle way and the holly king wins and he rules until the winter solstice and they engage in battle again and this time as the darkest point and cross over then the oak king wins and he welcomes the light in and like in all the traditions that we work on in these sessions these stories these narratives are really just a tool to help us explore the parallels in our own experience in our own life as we move just gently towards the final moments of our time together and towards the solstice. It's a beautiful time to consider your own relationship to land and sky, to land and water. The solstice is said to represent the transition, the highest point between land and sky and the relationship between fire and water. And the sort of opposite to Flashing of poles. Kumbo Bhuvasva Tatsavato Varanyam Bago Devasya Dimahi Yoyo na prachodayat. Ombo bhuvasva. Tatsavato varanyam. Bago devasya dimahi. Yoyo na prachodayat. The sound we heard a few chords on the harmonium and a few moments through the speaker was the Gayatri Mantra, one of the most well-known mantras in the Hindu and Vedic tradition, one of the ones that has made the transition to the West in full and is used frequently in in Jivamukti and many other yogic methods here in the West. And the Gayatri Mantra is really a prayer to the sun, that's why I've used it here at the end, a prayer to divine solar light, and there's many translations as with all Sanskrit, but the one I, I like, that I've heard the most, that I connect with is, O oh, divine light creator, may your supreme solar light illuminate our intellect and guide us on the path towards enlightenment. So not that dissimilar to the mantras we were working with earlier. And overall, the general gist is, thank you, sun, for giving us light, for showing us the way. So it's always nice to close circle 
that's where we began and obviously if I'm doing this not on a camera I'd be sat with my grid in front of me and with my flowers and my crystals and my cards all kind of having participated through the session with me and this is a really great time if you have your intentions written down as we talked about earlier on to take that piece of paper and to take um, the light from a candle if you're working with one and to making sure you have safety in a heat proof bowl to hand just set fire to your intentions and let them burn down to ashes and then maybe over the weekend over the solstice or over the new moon on on Sunday maybe go and take those ashes outside and disperse them in the earth and the water where you feel is good so that brings us to the end of our session together this evening it's been beautiful to spend time with so many of you and so many new people as well um, I know we haven't really used the chat so much tonight but um, this is a perfect time if you guys are coming back from your journeys and taking some notes in your journals or just observing where you're at how you feel this is a really nice time to share if you'd like to if you don't feel comfortable sharing on the group you can always drop me an email if you have questions uh, if you have questions now I generally keep this on for five or ten minutes after I officially end so if you want to ask something and have a direct chat with me or anyone else in the group that's good too so I hope you've enjoyed your session this evening I know the beginning was quite long today so I apologize for those of you that were more here for the sound um, I do try to mix the bowls in and out a little bit but when there's such a lot going on cosmically or as as there is this week um, with Mercury and the eclipse and everything else it's just such a lot going on it's kind of I think it's really important to touch on all the different aspects so that you can draw whichever elements are going to speak to you to assist you in your journey I hope you've had a beautiful journey with the sound it felt quite powerful today it felt like the sun's power really wanted to be heard and mixed in a little ocean drum to balance out the water element um, for many people it can be quite a hallucinogenic experience or it can be the opposite and be like a very deep sleep so whatever your experience has been particularly if you're new um, know that there is no wrong experience every time is different every person is different so if you have any personal questions that you would like to send my way you have all my details feel free to shoot me an email or a text and we can arrange a chat if you'd rather chat in video call and um, do you drink plenty of water do be gentle with yourself the sound takes three to four days to work its way through the body at cellular level so often you'll find that Probably by Monday or Tuesday, if you have a little glance back to the stuff that was on your mind today, you might find things have really shifted or whatever you're working on as an intention has really moved along. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for sharing space with me this evening. I hope you have had a beautiful journey um, and I wish you a beautiful solstice and a beautiful new moon in your moon child. And if you have any questions, um, about where you can see Stonehenge stuff or Solstice stuff. Um, all of you are on my mailing list if you signed up for a ticket through my website. Um, my bi-weekly newsletter will be going out tomorrow and I will be detailing in there lots of stuff you can engage with over this very powerful weekend because it really is a biggie and I really encourage you to, um, to make the most of it, to really look at this new start and this fresh energy as we move into the moon child season and see what you can do. So if your candle is still lit, it's great to close the circle. And again, in person, I always have everybody hold their candle, we sit in circle. Say a little thank you to yourself for showing up for yourself, for giving yourself this time on a Friday night, to each other for sharing the space. And to your guides, your spirits, to whatever's brought you into this little part of your journey today.